Today we're going to talk about hydration and fat loss. And the reason why I want to talk about hydration and fat loss today is because I don't think there's a really a clear picture as to what you should be drinking, how much you should be drinking, and if you're possibly drinking too much. So I went ahead and did some research and decided that it's probably a good idea to talk about hydration as it relates to fat loss. Now what's interesting about hydration and fat loss is that for a long time people th have thought or it's been kind of thrown out there that proper hydration will help with fat loss. Now while that's not 100% true, there are some factors in which hydration does contribute to fat loss. But it does so in an inadvertent way. It doesn't purposely, you know, if you're hydrated you don't then lose fat and everything else is void. What's really going on is that when you're properly hydrated, your metabolism works a lot better. When you're pop properly hydrated, you burn more calories because your cells work better. Um, also, when you're properly hydrated, you're probably not spending that time eating food. So you naturally will sometimes lose uh, or eat less calories. Now, there's no direct correlation to being properly hydrated and eating less, but they have found in certain people that drink more water tend to eat less. But there's also people out there that drink just as much water and don't eat less. So there's really no direct correlation between drinking water and losing fat right off the bat. But that doesn't mean that hydration isn't important. Hydration is important for good quality of life. Uh, it's very, very important for not getting or not developing kidney stones. Uh, it's really good for your metabolism. So for somebody who tends to be fatigued a lot during the day uh, and just generally have a slow metabolism, focusing on getting better hydrated will actually improve that. Now I know th those aren't sexy things. It's not like you're going to lose fat right away. But the, the good thing to know is, is that if you can get your hydration in check, it's going to be really easy to do a lot of other things and then you know, potentially lose fat that way. So let's talk about hydration and, and just how much water you really should be getting. So the general rule of thumb has been eight glasses a day, which is not a bad general rule of thumb, but the, the problem is, is it's not entirely accurate. So when we're attacking hydration, what we're really trying to do, the approach we're trying to take is, what's a general amount that I can shoot for and then how do I customize that based on my symptoms, okay? Because hydration is one of those things that, like everything else, is individualized. We give general rules of thumb so that people kind of have an idea of what they should be doing, and then we want to give them the tools to be able to individualize that, okay? So, talking about how much water. So you want to aim for about half your body weight in ounces of water. Now that's always going to differ per person, so what I usually use is the example of a 200 pound person needs 100 ounces of water a day. And again, that's a, that's a ballpark. You might need less, you might, might need more. Typically speaking, people that have higher levels of muscle mass and lower levels of body fat won't need as much water, whereas the inverse is true as well. Somebody who has a higher amount of body fat than, than lean tissue is probably going to need more water. So that's just because what happens when you, if you have more muscle mass, you retain more water, which means you don't always have to keep drinking it. Retaining water like a camel allows you to save water over a certain period of time, so you don't always have to continually uh, drink more of it. So more muscle mass equals, generally speaking, uh, having to drink less water. So that's another benefit of, of muscle weight other than obviously uh, you know, aesthetically pleasing and, and having you know, being stronger. All right, so another important part of proper hydration is good quality salt. So for a, long, a pretty long time we've been told to you know, limit our salt intake for fear of uh, developing high blood pressure. But what's interesting is that a proper amount of salt and the right kind of salt that still has the minerals and hasn't been highly processed is actually going to be really good for your overall health and good for retaining water that is going to then again help you uh, stay more hydrated. Okay, so good quality salt, the one that I recommend uh, is typically uh, Redmond's Real Salt. You can get that on Amazon. It's a little bit more expensive, but if you're already buying, buying sea salts or Celtic sea salts, um, or Himalayan salt, um, then it's very similar. I only like this one because it um, comes from a, an ancient dried up seabed. So there's no contaminant uh, uh, issues with any of the things uh, you know, that we deal with today. The oceans are really polluted. This is ancient. This has been dry for I think about a thousand years or so. So lots of good salt there. Uh, fruits and vegetables naturally give you more water intake. So if you eat you know, apples and bananas and, you know, things that obviously grow off of trees and grow on the ground, you're going to get a higher vegetable or higher water content in those vegetables and fruits. So if you're already eating those, you probably don't need to drink as much water. If you're not, you probably need to drink more water. Um, another quick tip, that's why I kind of highlighted here, vitamin B2, B2 turns your pee yellow. So if you take a multivitamin 
or if you take something, uh, any kind of B vitamin supplement or um, you know, maybe like an energy drink, something like that, there's a potential that your, your pee is going to be yellow. So that is going to throw off your urine color, which we'll get to in a minute when we talk about how to customize your hydration intake. Okay? And then last but not least in the how much category, coconut water is actually a really good substitute for things like Gatorade and Powerade and vitamin water and all these sugary drinks that really don't have that many vitamins in it. Uh, because it su supplies electrolytes, and if you're working out a lot, and you're or if you're just sweating a lot, so for like me, I you know I'll wake up in the morning and I'll do lots of training. Um, I'll need to replenish my electrolytes, even though I didn't really you know work out per se. I still was being very active when I was sweating. So sometimes I'll use coconut water post workout. Sometimes I'll just use it you know during the day to try to replenish electrolytes instead of using things like Gatorade, because Gatorade has way too much sugar in it, and electrolyte. I mean, uh, coconut water typically has a good amount of electrolytes and not a whole lot of sugar. And if it does, it's it's more it's definitely going to be on the lower end because it's it's coming from a natural source and it's coming from coconuts. Okay. So signs you need more water. I kind of this is kind of a uh, kind of a, a broad uh, subject head, but this should really say you know how to customize how much water you need based on some symptoms. So the very first thing is if you're thirsty at night, if you get to the end of a long day or the end of any day and you're thirsty at night and you find yourself like drinking tons of water, there's a good chance that you're not drinking enough water throughout the day. So just kind of invert that into trying to drink more water during the day. It's a good sign that you need to focus on maybe bringing a water ball to work or finding some kind of way to get more water during the day. Um, also the problem with night thirst is if you drink a ton of water, you, you typically wake up early in the morning, uh, like you know one or two in the morning, have to go to the bathroom. And that obviously disrupts your sleep, which isn't good for your health. Uh, in m multiple different ways, but we'll go to the next one. Dark urine. So your, your urine color really helps you gauge just how much more or less water you need to be drinking. So typically speaking, if your pee is, is clear, you've probably actually drank too much water. If your pee is kind of a light yellow color, that's pretty much the, the most perfect amount you can get. Um, and the reason for that is, is that when you, your, your pee is clear, you're actually depleting all of your electrolytes and your minerals, and you want to keep those in your body for normal functions, including energy functions, and, and your cells being able to you know, process what they need to process uh, without being you know, overburdened by not having enough minerals. Okay? So dark urine, if, you're, if your pee is pretty dark, you need to drink more water. Okay? If you're sweating throughout the day, if you live in a, in a hot climate like I do, you're sweating just coming out of the front door uh, and getting to your car. So sweating, if you sweat at all, you know, if you get out of the car and you notice your back is <laughs> sweaty from driving in the heat, that, that, that in, by itself will cause you to be a little bit more dehydrated, so you need to drink some more water. So anytime you lose water in any way, whether you're urinating or sweating, you definitely need to replace that. Okay? Constipation is another symptom of not enough water. So if you're constipated, there's a good chance that one, you might have too high a protein intake you know, in relation to your other macronutrients, or it could simply mean that you're not drinking enough water. So if you're chronically constipated, there's a good chance that you're also chronically dehydrated. So focusing on Water consumption can definitely improve the symptoms of constipation. Okay. Joint pain. If, you're, if, you're, you know, if, if your car isn't oiled well enough and, it, and the gears aren't moving well enough, you're going to have you know, creaks and, and problems with your car. Just like if you don't drink enough water, you're going to have problems with your joints. You know, your, your joints are fluid. The, the body is, is a fluid substance. It always needs to be you know, well hydrated and well lubricated. And you know, having, being dehydrated will cause joint pain. Uh, as well as some other things. Okay? Sugar cravings. Believe it or not, if you're craving sugar, you're probably craving water. Probably, probably not getting enough water, and that's because proper hydration helps fuel your metabolism, which helps fuel your cells, or vice versa. So if you're craving sugar, your cells probably are really want water or something that's going to help uh, keep them fluid and keep uh, the energy cycle basically running 24-7. Headaches is a very good example of a symptom of dehydration. It's probably one of the most common ones that people don't really seem to uh, get, get a grasp of. Uh, I have tons of people come up to me saying, you know, I get headaches in the middle of the day. Why do you, why do you think that is? Uh, and I usually always say it's, it's probably hydration. There's very few cases where people have headaches on top of also being properly hydrated. So it's, a, it's kind of a rare occurrence to see someone hydrated and, and also having headaches. Um, and that could also leave, that could be because of too much sugar as well. So. There's a lot of reasons for headaches, but if you're experiencing headaches chronically, I would definitely recommend uh, drinking more water and seeing that helps over time. Okay. So this kind of jumps off of the, the first or the second topic, 
causes of dehydration. A very obvious one, I think, in, for most people, is caffeine. If you're somebody who drinks, uh, you know, coffee or any kind of caffeinated beverage, and you don't see yourself paying more, then you probably aren't affected by caffeine like the same way as most people. But most people know that caffeine also, you know, makes you have to go to the bathroom. Caffeine basically will take free water in your body and, and get rid of it and, and, and kind of filter it through the system, get it to your kidneys and then to your bladder, and then you'll, you'll uh, pee it out. Um, alcohol. Believe it or not, it actually takes, um, for every ethanol uh, molecule, two hydrogen, or not hydrogen, two uh, water uh, molecules are taken with it. So, you know, if you drink, a, basically if you drink a cup of alcohol, you need two cups of water to replace it in terms of levels of hydration. So you definitely want to, you know, if you're drinking alcohol consistently or often, or even if you're just going out for a night to drink, and you're not uh, a big fan of hangovers, I would recommend drinking water to alcohol two to one. So, and that's two to one water to alcohol, not the other way around. Uh, that way you don't wake up with a hangover, because most hangover symptoms are due to dehydration, as, you know, also it has to do with your liver function, but at the very least, you want to make sure that you're drinking enough water and be able to avoid any kind of symptoms of dehydration from drinking alcohol. Alright, next is exercise. It's a pretty obvious one here. You know, if you're, especially if you're exercising in the summers, even in a very air-conditioned gym, uh, exercising will obviously cause you to sweat or at least raise your body temperature, which is then going to require water to help cool you down through sweating. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Hot weather, you know, like I said, stepping out of my front door to get to my car, I'm, you know, sweating bullets by the time I get there. It's not even that far of a walk. Okay, so hot weather will also cause it. And believe it or not, stress will cause dehydration. You know, when you're stressed, your body is basically taking all of its resources and pushing them to the areas that need the attention. Uh, and the way our stress response works is that anytime we, we feel stressed, uh, whether it's you know, forgetting to turn off the stove at home before we leave the house or you know, something completely in the future and, and probably not even going to happen, if we, whether it's mental stress or physical stress, the, our body reacts the same. And our body reacts in, in a level of severity to being essentially in a life or death situation. So if you constantly have your stress signals on, your body's constantly trying to, to gather resources. And if you're not putting back in what your body is using during stress, you are going to develop a lot of things, one of those being dehydration, believe it or not. So your body will, you know, that's why a lot of times when people are nervous, they have to go pee. The body's taking, you know, fluid out of the body and, sh you know, basically shoving it out. So that's one other thing you want to keep in mind here, okay? All right, guys, so that's my video on hydration. I hope that was interesting and, and helpful. Um, a lot of these things probably apply to you, and it's a good little checklist if you're ever feeling, you know, fatigued or if you're feeling tired, if you're not sleeping well, there's a good chance that hydration is playing a big role and you want to check your symptoms here, make sure you're getting your recommendations and, and kind of meeting your goals, and set yourself up to, you know, make this a habit you can do. So if you're somebody who's saying, you know, there's 100 ounces of water, that's a lot of water, well, okay, we'll start off with maybe, you know, one more cup than you usually drink. So let's say your average is 30 ounces of, of water a, a day, you know, just like if you were to measure it, uh, try 40 ounces, you know, for one week, and just, you know, slowly build up. I think a lot of people are discouraged by taking slow steps because we're, we're kind of always used to getting instant, you know, information. You know, you get emails, you get text messages, you get, you know, Facebook likes, you get all these things instantly. But if you can break down these big, big habits into smaller ones and eventually build up, you know, give yourself six months, whatever it takes, then you'll actually be able to uh, obtain a lot of these goals that you're, you're thinking are, are holding you back. Um, that's what I did with, with intermittent fasting. Honestly, it took me about six months. I took it slow. I didn't get mad at myself when I, you know, didn't, you know, do it every single day. There were days where I had breakfast with my family or my girlfriend or, you know, friends or where I just woke up and I was hungry. You know, I didn't beat myself up over it, but I kept trying and I did something that worked for me. So, again, taking things slow will definitely help, especially when it comes to hydration. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you later.